If you're just getting started at landscape photography and wondering where the hell to start, then this one's for you. I'm going to share with you my go-to settings, my defaults for when I'm out shooting in the great outdoors. I love shooting on the coast, usually at sunset, but you can use these settings for almost any scenario. And while they can get great results instantly, more importantly, they're just a jumping off point so you can grab your gear, head outdoors and start using your camera. So let's just get on with it. First of all, I need to urge you to get your camera on a bloody tripod. Get a cheap one for now and upgrade it later. We want our shots to be sharp and stable, so let's get it out of our shaky hands. Although if you just want to get out but don't have a tripod yet, I will be sharing some settings later in the video that will help you out. Okay, before we even leave the house, let's get a few menu settings sorted. First of all, image quality. So many modern cameras nowadays can shoot in RAW, so we'd be foolish to not try and make the most of the benefits that can bring if we can. If yours only shoots JPEGs, that's totally fine. You can still shoot some amazing photos. You just might not be able to edit quite as effectively later on. Two, two grid display. Composition is king, and we want to be thinking about that golden photography guide, the rule of thirds. So turn on that three by three display and help put the key parts of the landscape on the lines. Right, that'll do you. Feel free to leave the house. I mean, watch the rest of the video first and maybe make a note of some settings, but you know. Here they come, the best landscape photography settings for beginners. One, manual mode. You're a beginner, not a moron. You've bought a DSLR, so let's make the most of the features it's got and master it ourselves. This isn't an iPhone on auto. You can do this. Two, drive mode. Go for the two second timer. Why? We don't want our contact with the camera to affect the shot and introduce blur. So this gives the camera time to settle from you pressing the button and relax before it captures the image. Relax, like a camera relaxes. We're not shooting sports, so we don't need to worry about things like high speed mode. Two second timer. Three, white balance. If you're shooting in RAW, set it to auto because we can change it later. Amazing, not shooting in RAW? Well, flick between daylight, cloudy and shade and see what best reflects what you're looking at with your own eyes on the back of your camera. Four, ISO. Start at 100. This is the dream number because it means we're not artificially boosting the image and introducing grain. You can always turn it up after you've set everything else if you really need to make the image brighter. Five, aperture, whack it on F11. This keeps a lot of the landscape in focus by choosing a fairly wide depth of field and it's probably somewhere close to your camera's sharpest sweet spot. Six, focus, set this manually. Your camera doesn't know which part of the awesome landscape in front of you should be most in focus. Turn off auto, use the digital zoom and play around with the focus ring to get the most eye-grabbing part of the image sharp. Seven, 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 seven. What is it? Shutter speed. When I'm by the coast, I just love setting it to a 30 second exposure to just blur all that water, like these. Try it. The toughest challenge you're probably going to face is exposing the image correctly in daylight if you're gonna be experimenting with long exposures. That's when you're gonna to wanna to start to play with filters. If you want a starting point for your shutter for everyday shots, start around 125th of a second and experiment in both directions. A higher number will freeze movement but make the image darker. A smaller number lets more light and movement in but makes the image brighter. So you may have to experiment with your ISO and aperture to sort your exposure. So there you go, my default settings for shooting sunset photography at the coast is ISO 100, F11 and a 30 second exposure. Although I've normally got a graduated filter and another ND filter to limit the amount of light coming into the lens. If you don't have a tripod, ditch the two second timer and put it on single shot mode. Set your shutter speed to 125th of a second. This is about as slow as you can go handheld before you start to get softer images. So try not to let that number go below 100. Turn it up to 160 or 200 or whatever and you'll be just fine because it means the shutter's open for a smaller amount of time, which means your shaky hands have less chance to ruin your work. Are there other settings you can change? Yes. 
Regardless of your camera's brand, there's probably a million menu items and sub-menus you can tweak to your heart's content. But it won't make much bloody difference, despite what people on Facebook and various forums will tell you. What's the best picture style and custom sharpness to use? No one gives a but don't waste your time worrying about it. Go and shoot some images instead. Arguably the most important thing I can say to you is make sure you post process your images. It'll make such a difference to how they look. Even if that's just using Lightroom Mobile, which is free, available for your phone and shoots in RAW. Just dive in and have a play around. I won't go into it now because it's a massive topic for another time, but maybe try bringing the highlights down, the shadows up, and don't go crazy with the contrast and saturation. Landscape photography is a great journey of discovery and making memories. If you use these tips, then leave a link to your Instagram channel if you've got one in the comments, and I would love to check out what you're doing. But remember, this isn't a replacement for learning about exposure triangles and mastering photography. Every situation is different and needs different settings. That's it, leave a like, a little thumbs up, and maybe even subscribe if you're feeling ridiculously generous. Now get out of here and go create something, you donut.